Welcome back Aliens, my name is Levin Reddy and let's continue with this series on Python. In this video, we're going to talk about arrays. Now we have worked with list, we have worked with tuple and now we know how, how those things work. So if you want to have a list of values with you, of course you can go with list or if you want to make it constant, you can go for tuple. Now why array then? Now in array, we need to have all the values of same type. So we can have the same list with integer, float and string in one list, but that's not the case with array. So arrays are similar to list, but with one difference that you need to have all the values of same type. So if you say it's an int array, it should be of int array. If you say it is float array, all the values should be float. There's one advantage here. Arrays in Python, they don't have specific size. They don't have fixed size, which means you can expand, you can shrink it. Example, let's say if you have five values and if you think, hey, we want 10 values, you can expand it. And if you feel, hey, we have 10 values, but we need only four values now, we can shrink it. So it is quite flexible to work with. And it offers you certain methods to work with. Example, if you want to add elements, you can use append. If you want to find a particular element, you can use certain methods. In fact, we have a method called as index using which you can get the index number of a particular value. Oh, hold on. We'll do, it. we'll do that in the uh, practical video here. Now basically when you will be using array, so think about this, let's say if you have a list of students, right? And then in that, so every student will have a marks. So let's say we have one subject, which is let's say Python itself. So it's a language and you have a subject in your college. And of course everyone will be, will be having a marks. So if you have 10 students in a class, you, uh, you need to create 10 different variables like marks one, marks two, marks three. Or let's say if you have 100 students, you need to create 100 variables. Now instead of doing that, we can create an array, right? Now how do we do that? So in order to use array, we will be using array. But then the problem is we will not be getting this array by default right okay so we need to import a module called as array to use this so how will you do that you will say import array right so this is up to you so you have to say import array and in this module array we have a function called as array so we have to say array dot array this is how you create an array i know uh, it's a lot of arrays there so if you don't want to use this array every time you can also use array so you can say import array as ARR. So instead of using array every time, you can say ARR dot array. This one way. So again, you can use array dot array by importing array, or you can say import array as ARR, which is you are using uh, allies here, and then you can say ARR dot array. Now, if you if you just want to avoid everything, you can simply use. Uh, we have done that before, right? So if you want to work with modules, if you want to import modules, you can say from array import now you can specify the functions you want to work with or you can simply specify stars so star means you want to work with all the functions right now once you once you have this function array now let's see how do we get an array so i want to create array of let's let will not go for uh, marks here let's go for vals now vals is basically values okay so it's, it's short form for values now i want to create an array with, with the name of vals so you have to say array now we have to specify two things. The first thing you have to specify is the type. And the second time, second you have to mention is the values. Now why type? Because in array, all the values should be of same type, right? So if you say, hey, we have int array, you have to mention that it's an int array. If it is a float array, you have to mention that. How will you do that? Uh, okay, if you have to use some keywords, right? Example, we can say int float, but that, that is not how it works here. So you have to use a type code. Now what it means? Every type will have a unique code, okay? Example, for integer, in fact, in integer as well, we have different types of integers. Uh, we have byte, we have long, and we have int. When you work with different languages like C, C++, Java, we have these types there, right? We have byte, uh, we have long, we have int. Same way in here, in Python, we also have int. Now, depend upon, you know, the, the moment you change the type, it will change the size in the memory. Example, if you want to say, hey, I want a smaller integer, you can say byte. Because byte is a small integer, it takes only one byte. The other one is normal int, which, which will take two bytes. And then we have long integer, which will take four bytes. Now, what if you want to have float values? For that, we, it will take again four bytes. So it is f float, which will, which will take four bytes. In fact, double as well. So we have double float, which is which will give you more memory of eight bytes. What if you want to go for character? For that, you have to use u, which is Unicode, right? And it takes two bytes, okay? Because Unicode need two bytes to show data. Okay, that works. 
Now the question is, what if you want to have unsigned integer? Now what is an unsigned and signed? So let's say if you if you are going for normal integer, it goes from a negative range to a positive positive range, right? What if you don't want to store a negative value? In that case, you will be going for a unsigned integer because it starts with zero and it ends at a particular value. So we will not be considering negative numbers here. Right? And you can see in the table we have all the types. So if you want to work with unsigned integer, you have to use capital I. If you want to use signed integer, which is long one, you can use small l. Right? So you can, you can refer this table and we'll be using that here. So I want to create an array of integers. And the way you can do that is by saying I, because you are using an integer array. And you can give a comma. And you have to mention a square bracket because that's how you represent arrays. Now in this square bracket, you can mention values. I will go for simple values here just to you know make it simple. So I will say 5, 9, 8, 4, and 2. Simple values, we got five values here. And once you've got this array, you can print it. And how do we print it? It's very easy. Uh, you will say print, and you will print the values here, we'll say vals. Now if I run this code, you can see we got an array. It's so simple, right? We got, you can see it is printing array of type int and then we got the values. Okay, now let me just do a twist here. What if, if I put a different value example here instead of having eight, uh, let me say 8.5. Now you can see this is where problem starts. And if I run this code, uh, you can see we got an error. Error says integer argument expected got float. Can you see that here? So this is the problem we have, right? When you say i, it is integers, and if you're trying to put float, that it will not work. So of course you have to go for integers. Can I have negative values? Of course we can have, because small i means signed integer, which starts with negative value to positive value, so it will work. Let me just run this code. So it works, you can have negative values. But what if I say capital I, which means you cannot have negative values now. And the moment you run this code, you can see we got an error. It says cannot convert negative value to unsigned int, right? So this is important to remember. So when you create an array, you have to make sure that you specify a proper type code, okay? Now, once we have done with that, in array, as we are working with arrays now, we can use certain functions. Example, if I say values dot. So one of my favorite function is buffer info. Now buffer info will give you the size of the array, right? So if I say, okay, we were supposed to change this i, small i, so let me run this code, and you can see we got something. Now what is this something? So this is a tuple here with two, two things. The first one is the address. So this is the address of your array, and the second parameter there is actually your size, which is five, right? If I change the number of elements here, if I remove two, of course you will be getting four values now, so it will be four, right? So that's how you can work with buffer info. Uh, in fact, we have some other methods as well. I would say values dot, in fact, we also have type code, which will print the type of the code you're working with, which is int in this case. So you can say it is i, which is integer. This was the property here. Now, what if you want to add a value, you can use append. What if you want to remove a value, you can use remove. You can, if, if you want to reverse the entire array, you can do that here. Example, let's try. So if I say reverse, and if I print the values, and if I say F10, because reverse doesn't return value. So if you want to work with reverse, you have to say vals dot reverse. And you can see first, it, you got the array. It will reverse the array, it will give you the value. So if I say shift F10, you got the value, which is array and then two, four. So you can see all the values got reversed. But the point is, what if I don't want to print all the values as it is? I want to print the values one by one. Is it possible? Of course, right, this is array. And when you say array, it is similar to list. So we can use index numbers, right? Uh, index number start with zero, right? So we can use index number to print one value. So I would say values of, and I want to say zero. Now when I say values of zero, it will print the first value, right? In this case, it is two, okay? Why two? Because we are reversing it, right? Because after reversing, two will come first. Let's remove that, and because I don't want to reverse now, let's let's say run, and you can see we got five. If you change this value to let's say uh, let's say one, it will print nine. But I want to print all the values, not just one or two values, right? In this case, we will be using a loop. Your favorite loop, you can work with while loop, you can work with for loop, your wish, okay? Here I will go for loop, for loop because for loop makes sense when you know the range. So I will say for i in, where in. In fact, I will be using range. I will start with a uh, range will go till four or five because we have five values, right? So range will start with zero, it will end at four. And every time this loop runs, I have to say I. Now there are two things which are missing in this loop. The first one is the colon, right? And the second thing is this print belongs to a for loop. So you have to give a tab, a proper indentation, 
right? And now let's run this code. And we got the value which is 5, 9, minus 8, 4, and 2. So it's so simple. So this is how you, you print all these values here. So this is fun, right? So you can print all the values one by one. In fact, we have one more way. So if you don't, so what is happening here is the value of i is changing from zero to four. Every time you run this code, it will say values of zero, values of one, values of two. But what if you don't know this length of it? Because here, we know it's five, you can see that, but right? What if you don't know the length or if you want to make it more dynamic? In that case, you can say length of vals. So length of vals will give you the length and you can pass that length in range, right? So indirectly, you know, at runtime, it will be range five, right? Because the size is five and it works. Now this, this is one, another way of printing. All what you can do is, instead of saying range, you can directly say vals. Uh, so I will say for E, even I works, but then I will say for E in val and I can directly print the value of E. So for is very dynamic, you know, so sometimes you can use for with range, which will go for index values or here, it will directly go for the values. So in vals, we have five, nine, minus eight, four, and two. So it will fetch the value one by one. So E will refer to five, then E will refer to nine, then E will refer to minus eight. So your choice, the way you want to work with, example, if I this code, it still works. Okay, so this, this thing is working. Now, can I work with characters? Because we have seen how to work with integers. How we can also use float here. Can I work with characters? Of course you can. So what if you do is, instead of saying I, you have to say U, which is Unicode. You can say characters. And here, instead of having numbers, we should be using characters. So I will say single quote A, single quote E, and then single quote I. So we have A, E, I, and then if I run this code, you can see we got the same values. So yes, you can work with uh, Unicodes as well. Okay, this thing works. Now what I will do is I will just undo it and I will go back to integers because I want to do one small operation. Okay, so what I want is I want to create a new array, okay, with the same values. Example, I will just I will just take positive values now, 5, 9, 8, 4, 2. I want to create a new array with the same values. Is it possible? Of course, you can do it, right? You can say a new array here. I will say new array and equal to, you can say the same thing. You can say array and then i, then comma, you can put the same values. But instead of doing that, what you can do is you can say array bracket. And in this bracket, you can mention, hey, I don't know the type. See, when you know the type is i, you can do it here. When you know the values, you can type it here. But sometimes you want to copy it, right? Maybe you're, you're getting these values from somewhere else. In that case, you cannot simply type the values, right? So in that case, you can say, I don't know the type, just take the type from vals. Instead of saying i, you're, you're simply saying type code from val. And then the values. Now, I don't know the values, so you can say, now we have a different syntax here, try to understand this. So what we are saying is, hey, I don't know the values, but take the values from vals. So take the values a, now a will represent one value at a time, a for a in vals. So what will happen now is it will, so, so this for loop will take one one value from vals and it will assign to the array. So it will say, hey, I got five assigned, I got nine assigned. So that value which is getting up is coming into a and then it is getting assigned to the new array. Uh, just to prove my point, I will, instead of printing the vals, I'll print a new array here. Let's run this code and you can see we got the values. So the old array values are coming into new array. So syntax is, first of all, you have to mention, hey, I don't know the type of it, get the type from the old array, which is vals. And then the second one we are, we are mentioning here is the loop. So we are saying, hey, I don't know the values. What you can do is take one, one value from vals. And you can do that with the help of for loop, right? So you're saying for a in vals, and then it will fetch one more value, you're assigning it to the array. It works. In fact, you can do one more thing. Instead of assigning the same value, what if you want to assign the square of it? Example, I want to assign uh, 25, 81, and so on. I want to assign the square of a number. In that case, you can simply say a into a. So you're simply creating a square of a number. Let's run this code and you can see we got values. We got 25, 81, 64, 16, and 4. So you are getting the square of a number. So it's so simple to do all this stuff in, in Python, you know. If you do want to do the same thing in other languages, you have to write multiple lines of code. And that's why we say, you know, in Python, you can do multiple things in less number of lines. Now, what if you want to print these values using while loop? Again, we have done with for, so we know how it works. Can we use while loop here? Of course we can. You know, a lot of people have this confusion with for and while. You can use while loop here as well. Now, but the thing is, for while loop, you have to use three steps, right? You have to use initialization, you have to check for the condition, and you have to do increment, decrement by yourself. 
So let's do that. So I will say i is equal to zero. If we have to check for the condition, so we'll say while i less than length of new array, because I don't know the length of new array, colon, and then here you will say print the value, print new array, and then we have to use index value. So we have to say new array i, and once you have printed it, you have to do increment or decrement because here we have to use increment. So I will say i plus equal to one. So the thing is you can do it, but the only thing is you have to do it manually and you can say it works. And I know in this case, for loop makes more sense, right? Because you don't have to initialize, you don't have to increment decrement, and you don't even have to check for the conditions, right? But you can use while loop. So now there are the more to arrays. In fact, we have so many things to work with arrays now. So in this video, we have talked about the basics of array. How can we create an array? And how can you print the values? How can you create a different array from, from the existing array? So that's it from this video. I hope you are enjoying the series. Let me know in the comment section. Do click the like button if you're enjoying it. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Bye-bye.